304 BC, the one-year siege of Rhodes by Demetrius came to an end. It was a close run and bloody affair, for the support of Egypt won the day. Such was his rush to leave the island, Demetrius left behind his siege equipment, which the Rhodians sold. The people of Rhodes commissioned Caris of Lindium to design as a victory monument a massive statue, the Colossus of Rhodes. The statue was of the island's patron, the sun god Helios, with the commemoration, To you, O sun, the people of Dorian Rhodes set up this bronze statue, reaching to Olympus. The image of the Colossus with a foot either side of the harbour mouth, as popularly depicted in the TV show Game of Thrones, comes from the words over land and sea from the dedication poem. This stance, in reality, would have been impractical. The bronze would have collapsed under its own weight, and the harbour mouth would have been too wide for a 108-foot tall statue to stride. The Colossus's posture was likely more typical Greek, with legs close together and a robe connecting to the statue base as a third support. Our best visual guide is a relief from a nearby temple which shows the Colossus wearing a spiked crown, with one hand covering his eyes as if he were looking at the sun. In 226 BC, Rhodes was hit by a devastating earthquake. Having snapped at the knees, Colossus collapsed. Supposedly, the Oracle of Delphi had warned against the rebuilding of it, claiming that the people of Rhodes had offended Helios. The remains lay on the ground as a wonder of the ancient world, and Pliny the Elder wrote that the people were stunned at its sheer size. The ruins lay on the ground for 900 years, until in 654 AD, the Muslim Caliph, Muawiyah I, melted down the statue and sold it to a merchant. Despite this, the Colossus of Rhodes lingers in spirit as a symbol, the torch of freedom and independence. Today, the spirit of the Colossus is best reflected by the Statue of Liberty, encapsulating the same values of freedom that the Rhodians built in bronze over 2,000 years ago.